Intermittent fasting is a huge topic in the world of nutrition and eating, but is it safe, helpful, or, or even recommended? Here to answer all of our questions is registered dietitian and writer at MakeHealthyEasy.com, Jenna Braddock. Jenna, welcome. We love Thank having you. you. So glad to be here talking about this really yeah. popular topic. Exactly. And I love talking about this kind of stuff because you really do the research and really mm -hmm. figure things out. So what exactly is intermittent fasting? It is defined as a period of either restricted, limited, mm -hmm. or no eating, Okay. followed by a time frame of, quote, normal eating. And so there's several different styles to this. You might see every other day fasting, mm -hmm. so a full 24 hours of fasting, followed by a day of normal eating. You might see limited eating windows. That's a okay. common phrase you'll hear in intermittent fasting, mm -hmm. where you'll eat for eight hours, 10 hours, 12 hours, and then follow that with a 12, 14, or 16 hour wow. fast. And then there's certainly religious reasons to yeah. Fast as well, mm -hmm. and I note that because a lot of our research on intermittent fasting actually comes from religion studies. Got it. And so now, when you're hearing, you know, you don't eat for hours and hours, it doesn't seem like there would be any benefits to that. So, what are some? Right, so it's really interesting. I, I personally think this is a very exciting area of nutrition yeah. research right now. There's still a lot of questions to be answered, but it's very exciting. Mm -hmm. So what happens is when you have that longer period of fasting, within our cells, certain things literally like switch on and they're like maintenance crews okay. within the DNA, within our mitochondria, which is the powerhouse of mm -hmm. our cell. Things are initiated, systems are initiated that seem to be pretty beneficial and health promoting. Okay. So specifically, the research is looking at intermittent fasting's impact on the prevention or treatment of disease mm -hmm. in areas like diabetes, in cancer, in diseases of the brain like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. And really, the overall arching category is anti-aging. Um, so, it. And it's really exciting. I think there's still not a lot of clear-cut answers, but mm -hmm. it's suggesting that this could be a therapeutic approach Got to it. preventing some of these age and disease-related mm -hmm. conditions. So now, obviously, if we talk about the benefits, we have to talk about the risks. So right. what are some that you see coming from this? Well, the first is that the research is not super conclusive. Mm -hmm. Most of the studies are done in different styles, on different populations, and even use different fasting protocols. Okay. So it's really difficult to make strong population-based conclusions mm -hmm. from that. I've read a lot of the research, there's certainly more, you know, and I could have missed some things, right. but it's very unclear as to how to apply fasting to get these benefits. Okay. In addition, I see some differences in, in research based on gender. So women and men might in, be impacted differently, mm -hmm. which I think suggests we might get different protocols for yeah. men and women, which makes a lot of sense. It does. Um, and so there's still just a lot of questions yeah. to be answered, and I often worry about how the common public or media misinterpret some of those things. Definitely. So really quickly, who are the type of people that should stay away from this, shouldn't right. even try it? So there's some clear-cut no's to yeah. me. First of all, kids, yep. teens, and pregnant women. This is not for you. This mm -hmm. is not a good thing. Um, in addition, athletes should be very careful about it because there's the potential to compromise performance. Okay. In addition, just this is my personal opinion now. I don't feel like this is a great approach for young adults, specifically in their 20s. Okay. And the reason why is because for men, both mentally and physically, and for women with their bones, mm -hmm. they're still building body. They're still laying down the foundation for their health within their 20s. Oh. And this is really a population I've seen embrace yeah. fasting, which makes me kind of concerned because because they're prioritizing fasting sometimes above other things in yeah. their life, social, emotional relationships, and other health factors, where I don't necessarily see think that it's clear that that benefit outweighs the risk. So for women, I have concerns, could there be bone impact that they Definitely don't realize until later, later in their life? Mm -hmm. And we don't have research to show that because nobody's looked at that question. Right. That's a personal one. So I don't think this is great for the younger populations. I just don't see the efficacy yet, who I think it's really ideal for, potentially is mm -hmm. middle to older age adults okay. who are looking to do anti-aging techniques or looking to uh, prevent disease that they're at high risk for. Got it. And I think there's some real promise there for that. Yeah. All right, Jenna, well, thank you so much. As always, so much great information. You can head over to our website where you can find a link to Jenna's blog about intermittent fasting and so much more. Just head over to our website, firstcoastliving.net.